Worthington. John and James Worthington were raised in the Midlands of England, near estates worked by the right. They arrived in Upper Canada in the early 1840s. Their parents had both passed on recently. Soon after their arrival they settled near York Township where the city of Toronto was evolving and connected to some serious people who helped them build a construction business. As the general story goes, John was the eldest and had been sent to London, England, to apprentice as a quarryman. Who he apprenticed with is a mystery. James was a few years younger and we are told that he ended up near the Wright Estates where he gained work experience. A younger brother was with them but his story is even more sketchy. John Worthington built connections in the U.S. and had serious business in the quarry industry in Ohio and in New York. He invested some of his assets in railroad stock. James Worthington married and went to raise his young family in the Perth County of Upper Canada or Canada West as the area became known after Upper and Lower Canada were united as the British Province of Canada in 1841. What was James doing in Blanchett Township where the town of St. Mary's was being developed by the Galt Group? St. Mary's eventually became dubbed as Stone Town because it was built of stone. The Galt Group had been given special interest rights to buy massive land tracts under the stipulations of the clergy reserve land laws which had put them in stressful situations with the Canadian Patriot Party in earlier years. St. Mary's had become the home of many prominent people including Alexander Niven who married at St. Mary's before moving towards Siddharth in the Halliburton forests where he developed his surveying career. James Worthington became a widower and in the late 1850s he remarried to Caroline Hitchcock and moved towards Toronto. His wife had a family background that included Sudbury and perhaps Chelmsford. Which? There is a Sudbury and a Chelmsford located east of London, England. Those stories led to the creation of the Sudbury and Chelmsford sites developed in the 1600s in the Massachusetts area of the United States. Little known to anyone, there is also a Sudbury in the Midlands of England. The Worthington business in Canada grew and they became seriously involved in railroading. They connected to railroading giants like Duncan McIntyre who was given the task of building a railroad that was intended to one day connect the entire Canadian landscape. When completed in 1885, this railroad would be the first fully Canadian intercontinental railroad. This was important as it would give Canada a fair chance to compete commercially against the United States. McIntyre had taken over earlier projects that had stretched rails from the Brockville area towards the Carleton and Smith Falls area. The path was generally the same as the Rideau Canal Trail and the canal had been built to connect the St. Lawrence River shores to the Ottawa River at a time when Ottawa was no more than a forestry site known as Bytown. The task of building the Canadian Pacific Railroad was complex and involved plenty of corruption. By 1880 the Worthington engineers and quarrymen had managed to help McIntyre build the Canada Central Railway along the Ottawa River and had reached Pembroke and then Mattawa. Meanwhile, John Alexander MacDonald had become the first federal prime minister of the newly created Dominion of Canada but had stepped aside in 1872 due to the Pacific Scandal Inquisition which he was implicated in. He was exonerated of his Pacific Scandal affairs and had been re-elected as federal prime minister of the Dominion of Canada in 1878. Alexander Mackenzie had served as the federal prime minister during the inquest. John and the youngest Worthington had passed on in 1872 and 1873. James Worthington was the only one left and was working with McIntyre when McIntyre was bought out by MacDonald who had recently chartered Canadian Pacific Railway as an official corporation. The CP group kept McIntyre on as a VIP and James Worthington was hired as a chief field engineer when they sent thousands of men to build an extension from Mattawa to the Northlands of the Ontario province. James Worthington built the extension to Geneva Lake and most of the line from Sturgeon Falls to Sudbury was built near the 1850 Salter Base Line. The CP line reached a site near the area where Salter had noted a rich mineral source which would be mined as the Creighton Mine beginning in 1902. From that point a junction station was created and Worthington moved the CP main line north and towards the Levac Hills and Geneva Lake. Meanwhile the secondary line intended to reach Salt St. Marie was left unfinished near the site that would soon become Worthington Mine. James Worthington had purchased a bold factory in 1882. 
The site was near Toronto and became the story of Swansea, Ontario. Ironically enough, the Victoria mine near Worthington mine was developed by Ludwig Mond who had developed his smelting process in the Swansea area of Wales and England. James Worthington passed on in the late 1890s. He had left the CP soon after completing the extension to Geneva Lake. The Sudbury Junction was named in honor of his second wife, who was Chelmsford named after. James Worthington bought mining claims along the way. He connected to prospectors and other mining guys like Cameron who helped him develop the Blessed Mine and the lesser known Cameron Mine. His mines would eventually become assets of the Mond Group and then of Inco by the 1930s. Meanwhile, John Ferguson built North Bay. John Ferguson was the nephew of Duncan McIntyre. Ferguson was about 20 years old when his uncle funded the purchase of some land near the CP extension. McIntyre had become one of the wealthiest Canadians by then. The story just keeps giving. The Murray of Pembroke bought the Flanagan claim and it became the first claim mined in the Sudbury Basin. They sold it to the Vivian Group and so on the Murray continued to operate an inn in North Bay and continued to play political roles in Pembroke. Meanwhile a Flanagan Inn operated nearby in the North Bay area. Was it an investment taken on by the CP geologist who'd sold that claim to the Murray? Blessed Mine operated for less than a decade. Blessed Township became the site of Blessed Valley. Whitson River served the valley and reached the Chelmsford Station noted as the site of CP Station by Provincial Land Surveyor Joseph Degas who was surveying Balfour Township in 1884. Did Worthington ever paddle up and down the Whitson River? Was there more to the Worthington than some politically correct-minded folks would lead you to believe? Was the Sudbury Junction CP station just a small stop that just happened to develop as a major point in railroading history as the history of mining evolved? Alexander Niven surveyed some sites near North Bay and near Sudbury and was a leader in the survey society. Hume Blake Proudfoot worked surveys along the Nipissing and Algoma district border line. The surveyors of the 1880s in this area always noted Salter's 1850s lines.